All right, let's talk to or let's talk about the tight ends. We'll dive back to this. We're going to do a full overview of just, you know, what the tight end situation is looking like. There's some reports about Darnell Washington or some theories about Darnell Washington, I should say, not being active at the start of the season. What are the possibilities of that? What's Pat Fryermuth looking like the whole nine? We'll start with the Darnell Washington thing. You look at the tight end room right now. It's Pat Fryermuth leading the way with Zach Entry, Darnell Washington, and Connor Hayward fighting from behind. Rodney Williams is there, but he'll probably be a practice squatter. Is there a possibility that Darnell is inactive come week one and that the team sticks with Gentry, Gentry, say, say Zach's last name? Because everybody was calling me out on it like two, two episodes ago saying, say, learn how to say Zach's last name. I thought I did. I thought I've known how to say it. Apparently I don't. Gentry, Zach Gentry, which I'm saying, I like, right, saying that right. I think I think you've got it right. It, right? Like, I, I say gent, I say gentry, but gentry. I think that the the big thing for me is I always pronounce players' names wrong because I don't watch a lot of games with the sound on. <laughs> so <laughs> so people ask me yeah. how, how I get so many people's names wrong, and I'm like, dude, no, I'm, same same. I'm sitting in a press box. There's no noise. Nobody's oh, talking. It's just, just numbers. That I'm watching the majority yeah, of the you're... football that I consume is all 22. So yeah, yeah. You're just you're just like watching at three in the morning. It's a different yeah. different situation. But I don't know what. Like I thought I've always been saying his name right. So, anyways, Washington. Is there a possibility that they keep all four of those? And if they do, do you think that Washington really will be inactive come week one? I do think there's a possibility that they keep all four. Um, you know, with them not having to use a spot on a traditional fullback, which I don't anticipate them doing, uh, with Derek Watt kind of out of the fold. Uh, I think Monty he, the mullet, bro. Yeah, Monty I think you can use up. Hayward in that role. Yeah, he's going um, to in, in some form or fashion, you know, mix things up. But um, I would personally be really surprised if Washington was an active come week one. I just I, – I would be – borderline flabbergasted honestly because yes. i just don't i truthfully don't believe that uh there's anything that zach gentry does noticeably better than washington right now and then i yeah. just think that in general usually uh you know day two draft picks even if they're not going to play a significant amount of snaps week one of their rookie season i think that if it's close you typically will lean towards the young guy. You'll typically lean towards the guy that you invest, invested a high draft pick in. And I think that Washington's going to get a chance to be, you know, the blocking tight end on this team because, quite frankly, he's the most talented at it. So, yeah, I think that's what it comes down to is like, what does everybody fit a role with? Connor Hayward is that utility piece. You're going to keep him because he's that utility piece and you could use him everywhere you need to use him, even if he doesn't play a lot. Pat Fryermuth is Pat Fryermuth, so he's the receiving option, but he's your starter. You need a big blocking tight end. You didn't draft Darnell Washington to replace Pat Fryermuth. You know, I'm just just to go back on the uh, on the Martavius Bryant tweet of that's not my replacement. Mm -mm. Well, it wasn't Pat Fryermuth and it wasn't Connor Hayward. It was it was Zach's and uh, I think you you just look at the situation just like you said. Like Gentry's good for what he does, and if the Steelers didn't draft Arnell Washington, you'd feel comfortable with the tight end room. But they upgraded, and that's the end of it. And you know, it'll be I think it'll be more interesting to see if they keep all four of them because if they do keep all four of them, I think Gentry is the guy that finds his way onto that inactive list on Sundays instead of Darnell Washington. And if that's the case, does it even make sense to keep Gentry around? Yeah, I think that's what you have to figure out, right? Is I had this theory that um, I think the Steelers should potentially look to mix in a little bit more 13 personnel. Yeah. But you could do that with Gentry or Hayward, really, uh, if, especially if you want to pass a little bit more out of it. I'm just kind of thinking back because the Chiefs were unbelievably amazing this past season out of 13 personnel, uh, which is not what you would typically think an Andy Reid offense would be known for. But it was a really nice wrinkle to their offense. I think it's something that the Steelers could potentially pursue, um, especially if they want that run-heavy kind of uh, mantra on offense. But – I do think that Zach, it could be worth keeping around, even if he is inactive, because, you know, he he you're familiar with him. You know, like he knows the system. He knows the offense. But I definitely do think that Washington, even though I think that he has some things that he has to improve on in terms of, yeah. you know, with his actual blocking technique that needs a little bit work, just his physical build 
is way more like it's more impressive than the guys in the room and mm-hmm. the things that he can already do even without that technical refinement is really impressive so i think like i said i think that washington is going to be a, a, a really nice complimentary piece on this offense i'm really excited to see you know what he looks like come week one yeah me too i i agree i think washington's the most exciting part of that but i think pat fryer me too like you take away half of pat's workload and say you no longer have to be like that devoted blocking you know essentially what the steelers told pat this offseason was don't worry about it you, you know just go be pat fryer Muth. don't have don't be zach gentry or don't be anybody else and i think that takes a lot off of his plate and also makes him a better route runner will make him a better receiving type you know like travis kelsey doesn't sit around to practice learning how to block that's just you know that's not part of his game. I don't think Pat Fryer should be doing the same thing. You should learn, but it shouldn't be most of his or at least half of his workload. I think that boot bumps him up. And then you got Connor Hayward that I think could be utilized quite a bit. You see a role for him. I think that's the biggest question next is, do you see a role for Connor Hayward on this offense? Or do you think he's got to kind of earn his spot? Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be potentially a little bit of a Swiss army knife kind of yeah. role. Is he going to play a little bit of fullback? Is he going to play a little bit of, you know, wing? Is he going to potentially going to get a little bit of snaps in the slot? Yeah. I think that Hayward's value honestly may come from if Fryermuth were to go down with an injury, mm-hmm. Hayward could supplement some of the things that Fryermuth does out of the slot as a receiver in a very – we'll just say diminished or reduced way and clearly not as effective as for with this, but he's probably more effective out of the slot than a guy like Washington would be at least early on, especially, or a guy like Gentry is going to be. So I do think that there's a little bit of value in that, especially because we know how important for with this to the offense, how many plays they run for him. You know, they really like getting him on option routes and, you know, especially underneath uh, being that security blanket, if you will, cliche uh, for Kenny Pickett. So I think there's a, a role for him for sure. And I also want to point out, you know, Hayward was a pretty solid special teamer last year. Oh um, yeah. He was one of the team. He was in the top five, I think for tackles as well. And the yes. you know special teams is always what matters to those end of the roster type of guys. And I think even if he doesn't have a significant role on offense, when everyone else is healthy, I think his special teams value is good enough to land him on the 53. So, yeah. Oh, I think he's definitely on the 53. I, I think that if the Steelers had to choose, if they were like, oh, we have to get rid of a tight end, it'd be Zach Gentry before it would be because he Hayward. might, his skill set may be a little bit more repetitive. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you could, I think that the Swiss Army knife helps compared to, you know, you could, worst case scenario, I don't think that you could go replace Zach Gentry very easily, but I do think that it's possible. And I think that it's much more difficult with everybody else. So I do think that those would be the three to keep four though is, is very interesting. I guess the last one, the last part of this would be Pat. Do you see Pat's role changing? That That's what I'm interested to see. I think it really depends on what type of personnel they are going to really lean into. Are they going to be even more 12 personnel heavy? Are they still yes. going to be 11 personnel base? Is Allen Robinson, do they view him as a full-time slot player? Is he going to eat into um, some of Pat's, you know, snaps in the slot last year, which uh, for our moose, you know, percentage of snaps uh, in the slot really increased like post tra- post chase Claypool trade. Yeah. So that's one of the things I'm interested to see is how those pieces all fit kind of in the puzzle. Um, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, like last season, I think that, uh, he played 36% of his snaps in the slot. That was up from 32% the year before. I don't think it's crazy to think another increase could potentially be coming, but I think it all depends on what type of formations and things that they're trying to lean into on offense are. So um, I, I definitely think Frymuth still going to have a really, really significant role um, in the passing offenses and be one of their top options for sure. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is this is a pat – this is a pad offense. I think that the Steelers. So the way I look at it is Art Rooney has gripped Matt Canada. And I know not everybody agrees with me, but he has said, this is what we're doing. Stop it. Stop it all. This is what we're doing. Gave him a game plan. And in that game plan, it will 100% include get Pat Fryermuth the ball as much as possible. Because you want to know what Ben loved to do? Give Heath Miller the football. And you want to know what Kenny's going to want to do? Give Pat Fryermuth the football. The rest of them will get their touches and everybody will be just fine. But if Art Rooney's got his way, the Steelers are going to run the football and throw to their tight end. And it works all the time. So there's no reason to not make it happen. 
Um, but I do think that I think Pat's role, I don't think it changes. I think it develops, but I don't know how that development's going to look yet because I am very interested to see how it looks in training camp when everybody's got pads on and things are running plays and you know what I mean? Like seven on sevens and OTAs don't really show you much in mini camp and you, you know, let's put some pads on, see where Pat ends up on a football field more often than not. And then we'll, we'll go from there.